Okay, so um, theme th six, uh, architecture reasoning. Here is the case study, Jets Rental, part of the 2DB604 course. Uh, as you remember, Jed is, uh, has finally decided to put his business on the web and, and asked the team of developers to, to come up with a, a solution. And in this uh, uh, sh lecture, we will focus on, on well, and exemplify various reasoning scenarios uh, connected to, to the architect arch architecting procedure. Uh, the the case is is adopted from uh, Edward Brown. Here is the the uh, description. Uh, as you see, um, various uh, uh, perspectives on, on on things that add complexity to to the problem here. Uh, this is Lisa. You met her before. Uh, she for her uh, performance is important. Uh, she needs quick responses since she is uh, working uh, with her customers and, and uh, need, uh, needs access to, to the information uh, Jed's rental application uh, should provide. Um, and the architects in the team, well, they will have to take this uh, uh, concern from Lisa uh, and, and together with her, turn it into some architecture significant requirements but then they need to design for for these requirements and they have to look up options and make decisions and part of the game here is is of course uh, architecture reasoning they look up in their knowledge base and they rank and they uh, uh, remove uh, and options that are not feasible and then eventually they come up with decisions they they manage trade-offs and at the end of the day they will also evaluate the strategy as a whole uh, the scenarios we we have uh, discussed before are, are are these three uh the strategy fitness uh the the comparative uh evaluation of, of design options and also uh, when you manage trade-offs to, to uh, uh, reason about uh, which direction you should go and uh, you have met the team before and here they are again and we stick to the performance tactics so that we don't have to, to introduce a new tactic for each and every session uh, but the idea for the the performance tactics uh, is of course to to take care of the events that arrive into a system that requires processing uh, that that processing uh, can uh, deliver results uh, and responses within uh, the the specified time constraints and this should be independently or uh, dependently on depending on on the number of events of course but also the complexity of the the um, uh, processing etc so there were three types of tactics uh, resource demand resource management resource ab arbitration we looked at at uh, uh, resource demand uh, uh, we saw that there were some options you could re reduce the overhead you can increase efficiency uh, manage jobs bound execution times so so what type of evaluations uh, can you do here? What, what do you reason about here as a designer? Well, one of the, well, f let's for instance look at reduce overhead. Well, uh, if, if you want to uh, apply this tactic, well, you, you have to first identify overhead. And it, when it comes to performance, it could be like bottlenecks in the system uh, and, and uh, or you can, you can create uh, models that you use to to identify these bottlenecks and and uh, that is is part of of uh, your evaluation then so these models can then be used to reason about well should we strive for reducing overhead or should we look for a more in a more efficient uh, processing algorithm what should we do and the same here well, if, if you look at manage the number of jobs and the job sizes, well, before you make a decision as an architect, you have to, well, 
make clear to yourself that that we make an informed decision so so you reason about well is the cost of uh, reducing job sizes for instance is that a cost that we can accept in the system because all of these have positive effects but they also have negative effects so the cost and benefit uh, reasoning is is ongoing here uh, well during the the entire architecture design process so you need to reason about alternatives in order to find the balance here for the resource demand and the same here uh, holds for for resource management you know when you well increasing resources well there is a benefit for sure but there's also a cost associated if you decide to go for uh, multiple copies of computa computation okay should you have your servers uh, in-house or should you have a, well the, the uh, uh, a cloud-based solution where you actually buy computational power uh, based on the number of computations you can you can make uh, different models here that architects will use to reason about what is the most efficient uh, s approach the most ap efficient tactic when it comes to satisfy the qualities and the qu constraints and and, and the re other requirements we have in our system so so now you have seen like the the first type of, of, of reasoning where you where you reason about your design options which one should you use which one is better somehow than than the others um, but in order to do that well you you uh, have to create models uh, and and uh, you can do this uh, as I see, said before in the introduction lecture with argumentation techniques so for instance say now that that uh, you, you have a a scenario you can you can annotate that scenario with timing and and you can you can walk through uh, the system and you can convince yourself and possibly some other uh, people in the in the design team that this is a is a viable uh, solution uh, then you can also have analytical models using verification techniques which is like the strongest uh, type of, of, of uh, proof for a claim or uh, support for a claim uh, whereas you can actually come up with a performance model for for uh, your uh, uh, for the for the for the system model you have for the architecture you have and you can do calculations and you can you can you can come up with a, a value for for the worst case uh, processing times etc so what will happen what if uh, we we have uh, 10,000 simultaneous uh, jobs in, in the system you can do many things with these uh, uh, that supports the, the reasoning uh, within the design team in this case um, if you look for for the patterns well in the same way you have uh, various alternatives you could go for a peer-to-peer -peer or client server you saw this example is exactly the same as as for the tactics uh, in practice session uh, you can you can multiply computational units you can introduce concurrency increase resources and also multiple copies of data uh, but but here well in order to to decide should we go for client server should we go for peer-to-peer -peer? well how do you know if, if you should go for for this one or that one well if the team reasons about which which direction to go they need some 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 support uh, for their reasoning and 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 one something that is very important is in, in this case would be well analytical models where you can compare response time uh, throughput etc for for the two alternatives here and with the support from these uh, models, the the uh, architect's uh, reasoning is is uh, pretty much straightforward, and they can come up with a decision sooner rather than later. And uh, well, if they go for a, a client server with a load balancer in the middle, well, 
now they have a strategy and 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 what remains now is just to convince your stakeholders that the strategy you have proposed is uh, exactly what they uh, w what they need something that that uh, meets their uh, request on quick responses and well you have your argumentation models I don't think that a performance model is something that Lisa would understand but you can argue with support from from scenarios and and walk the the stakeholder through the the scenarios uh, and hopefully at the end of the day Lisa will be happy uh, with the the model uh, the architecture the team proposes and well they can move on and this uh, type of, of uh, argumentation based evaluation is, is something that you find in the, the uh, architecture trade-off analysis uh, methodology ATAM okay one thing that we didn't touch uh, here in upon in the, the this lecture is is trade-offs but you could consider the comparison of peer-to-peer of -peer and uh, client server partially as as, as a trade-off where you have two alternatives and you can you can see that if you go for the peer-to-peer -peer, for instance you will get several of the the well multiple copies of computation multiple copies of data uh, per, uh, concurrency etc you will get at as part of the model with the client server well you need this load balancer to, to manage the the multiple servers etc so so there are some benefits you get from peer to peer that you don't get immediately from 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 client server however the complexity of the peer to peer approach is is of course uh, much higher than than client server which is much more straightforward okay so so that concludes uh, theme number six architecture reasoning um, as you have seen uh, to a large extent it's about what you model uh, and how you can use your models uh, in the discussions within the team and with other stakeholders because Architecting it to a large, is to a large extent about communicating alternatives and and step by step work together towards a consensus where you have something that is good enough and it's good enough in a way that it satisfies uh, all stakeholders and their concerns. Okay, now we can move on.